the U.S. Senate unanimously passed a legislation protecting human rights in Hong Kong. Now, the Senate has banned the export of crowd control weapons to Hong Kong's police force. It bans the export of uh, tear gas, pepper spray, rubber bullets and stun guns, weapons that are being used by the Hong Kong police on a daily basis recently. The Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act now goes to the House of Representatives, which earlier approved its own version of the measure. The two chambers will have to reconcile the two bills into a single measure that can pass U.S. Congress and be sent to President Donald Trump for approval. We in the United States stand in solidarity with the Democratic protesters who have every right to assemble and petition their government for their rights as citizens of Hong Kong. The administration and the president himself should voice their support for the protesters in Hong Kong, which would send an important message to the Chinese Communist Party not to get involved or in any way escalate the situation. Secretary Pompeo's call for calm yesterday is weak tea, not close to enough. Meanwhile, China hit back at U.S. Congress saying that the resolution is a clear interference in its internal affairs. And if it is not prevented from becoming a law, it can backfire on the U.S. Hong Meanwhile, in the embattled financial hub, Hong Kong police announced that around 1,000 people were arrested so far over the Polytechnic University siege. Some anti-government protesters trapped inside the campus tried to flee through the sewers, many of whom failed to escape and some were arrested. Police said that they had no plans to storm the campus. Weon's correspondent Patrick Falk gets us this report from Hong Kong. Patrick uh, tells us what exactly the ground situation is. Now, the situation at the PolyU campus has been described as dangerous. That's according to the president of the university who was inspecting the site earlier on. He said there were about 100 protesters still holed up inside, only 20 of whom apparently were actually students of the institution. And he also said that the condition of the campus was chaotic. And we have seen uh, lots of images of the place looking just trashed and he added as well that hygiene conditions were deteriorating and that uh, there may be a health risk to those that are still inside uh, the police haven't set a deadline for when everyone needs to come out and surrender but that may be a factor in determining how all of this ends one of the things i suppose they might be worrying about is that yesterday at least two dozen people uh, came out and gave themselves up uh, but today only five people according to reports have left the campus uh, and uh, it seems as though a lot of those that are staying behind are really digging their heels in and could perhaps uh, put, ha put up a fight and uh, will continue to, to res resist. We did think that all of this will have ended uh, certainly by this morning. But here we are again Wednesday night and it's still continuing. And there's no telling exactly when this is all going to be over. Patrick Falk uh, joining us uh, with that uh, update uh, from Hong Kong. Away from Hong Kong.